Welcome to the Black Contractors Network Podcast, where we'll be discussing hot topics around construction, being a general contractor, how to get started, and everything in between. And everything in between. Your host has over 20 years plus of construction experience. Here he is, Richard W. Johnson. Made in the U.S. of A. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Black Contractors Network. Today, we are going to talk about why we're always trying to learn more about our history and what better way to do that than by celebrating the past. Yo, Abraham Lincoln, my dude, my guy. I'm a slave and have no last name, though you may have heard of me. So don't get me wrong. I'm a grateful man. Anywho, I'm just writing to say, nice job, my guy. Pretty fucking epic and about goddamn time. Anyways, I'm wondering what's up with this 40 acres and a mule thing. I'm hearing about. My neighbor is complaining that he got a horse instead. So what am I supposed to do? Just go off and live off the land by myself. Or should I try to sell it at the white man price? Nigga, are you crazy? I don't know if you know this, Mr. President, but mules are extremely strong animals. Can't I get, let's say, two extra acres? Or maybe two and a half more? Since I still haven't heard anything from you, I was thinking maybe we could trade the mule for some other stuff. But I'm not sure how much work it would be for the mule to plow my land and get my crops ready for harvest. So should I sell it at this price? Or would it be better if I tried to plant more seed in my fields? This question has been engaging my mind for at least 10 years, off and on. But now we have our freedom. So what does that mean? Does it mean we can finally go off and start living a life of luxury with all those brand new horse and pony things you're handing out? Or do we have to keep working hard on the farm? I don't know how to ride a horse, so they're not much use to me. My former owners probably could, but they seem happy with their land and mules too. Thanks. Abe, it's me, a guy you freed in 1863. Now let's talk about the story behind the 40 acres and a mule slogan. The history of 40 acres and a mule began during the Civil War when Union General William T. Sherman issued Special Field Order No. 15 in January 1865 which called for the redistribution of 400,000 acres of land on islands along South Carolina's coastline as well as Georgia's Sea Island and the area around Charleston. Blacks who had been enslaved on these lands would be given tracts to farm, with some families being allotted up to 40 acres and a mule that would be loaned to them by the government under favorable terms until they could afford it themselves. A few months later, after Lincoln's assassination, President Andrew Johnson rescinded the order and returned the land to its former white owners. The phrase became symbolic of failed promises and broken dreams at the end of Reconstruction in 1877, when newly freed blacks were left without any land or means of support. It came back into common use during the Civil Rights Movement, when activists often invoked it as a reminder that black citizens had yet to receive what was owed to them. It has since become an echo of many other claims to justice, reparations for slavery, Fair wages for women, better representation in Congress. Forty acres and a mule is not just a graphic design or an attempt. This promise was not kept, however, and has since become a symbol representing the cruelty and injustice of slavery. We're always trying to learn more about our history, and what better way to do that than by celebrating the past. And that's a wrap for this episode. Thank you for listening to our podcast. It is our hope that you found this valuable information and we'll be able to take advantage of the tips we discussed today. Catch you guys on the next one, and remember, unity is the key. Thank you for listening to the Black Contractors Network. Make sure to like, rate, and review. See you next time. Be safe out there, and take care of each other.